The desert adapted lions in Namibia are, are unique for the species. It's the only place in the world where lions um, live in such extreme desert environment and that they also go onto the coastline. It's the only place where you can see freelaning wild lions um, on a beach. For the past uh, week we've been we've spent in the Hwane Breva system uh, where we have been following the respective prides of the Hwane Breva system. Uh, first we started with the for the, the main pride of the Hwane which is staying more to the east of the river uh, where we had a male, uh, two lionesses and then two cubs where we got to spend about four days with them. From there we focused our attention on the floodplains pride because the floodplains pride had to break into two parts as well, whereas Alpha and Bravo, the two sisters of Charlie, had moved off towards the dune fields and into the dune fields they started to hunt on Comorans by the Oasis Springs and then from the Oasis Springs they ventured westwards and then they made contact with the ocean and then that's where they were preying on the seals, more Comorans and some beached whales and so on. That's what they were, marine diet that they were basically having. So they've really found an alternative food source at the coastline. In terms of uh, the work that you do, which are the latest uh, important findings of the desert, desert lions? Alpha, one, one, one of the most important uh, uh, future aspects of the, the, the desert lions and the, the lion population is the fact that they, that they are starting to to utilize the marine food um, resources more frequently. And, uh, and I, that, I do believe, has, an in, has two very, very important uh, elements to it. Um, the one is the fact that it is such an attractive tourism uh, um, element, uh, that only place in the world where you can see lions on the beach. So I do believe that in time, uh, Namibia uh, needs to organize herself. Uh, and, and set up tourism concessions or just develop that aspect um, of, of tourism in the Skeleton Coast Park to, to target these lions you know, that frequent uh, the coastal area. Um, uh, that might take some time to, to, to initiate and get off the ground. The second important thing is the fact that the, the marine food resources is now providing an additional source of food mm -hmm. for the lions. So what we have seen over the years is that your know, lions have, have large home ranges. So on average, uh, a, a pride of females and, and some youngsters uh, would have a home range of, say, in the order of 10 to 15,000 square kilometers. Um, it has to be that large because uh, seasonally, uh, prey animals could move out of the area, so they need to have a large area that they can access. And in times when prey are, are scarce, uh, lions tend to have been moving towards the, the inland area and livestock, because they have this mental memory, these hotspot memories of where they, they found food. Mm -hmm. So if they're struggling to find food in their, their natural area, they inevitably migrated to, to human settlements and started killing livestock, donkeys. And, and then that created a problem and inevitably those lions would, would be shot. Um, so what we have seen now, um, in the last two years, four different prides have f discovered the food resources. Mm -hmm. So essentially you have, you have these four prides that are now utilizing the coastal zone down here. Now, in the last 18 months, all of those prides have been responsible for livestock killings on the eastern edge of their home range, yes. near people. And ever since they started eating life, you know, food at the, at, the, at the ocean, the marine food resources, they have not returned there. So that provides that alternative um, food of heart in, in times of hardship. 
because I, I do not believe that, that uh, lions could live on the coast all the time. Mm -hmm. The conditions are so harsh. Um, and, uh, and it's important for them to be able to, to return inland in their, their normal habitat, but then go to the coast in the times of hardship. We do believe, and we have good, very good evidence of that having occurred um, in, in the days of yore. Uh, you know, before big human impact, uh, we've got images of lions feeding on a beach whale and even killing seals. But all of that stopped uh, when those lions were killed in the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. So um, it took the lions not very long. It took them about 15 years to repopulate um, the area all the way down to the coast. Um, but it took them essentially 20 years to rediscover the knowledge that there's food along the coast. And today uh, we have three, three groups of lions that go to the coast and, and utilize the, the marine food resources. So that would then mean killing Cape fur seals um, and then uh, uh, particularly cormorants uh, that uh, you know is, is, is very nutritious and they, they, they catch a lot of cormorants. And then a whole range of other uh, sort of smaller uh, marine food items. Um, but it's a wonderful development because it's the, it's the only sort of the, the largest carnivore on the globe that can be termed a, a maritime carnivore. That means animals that, that basically utilize food uh, in, in the tidal zones um, in, of the marine uh, food base uh, and then also the terrestrial food. And those, that's a very important um, uh, aspect because uh, it allows flow of, of energy and nutrients between the two trophic zones, you know, your aquatic zone and your terrestrial zone. Uh, and, and the flow of, of energy and nutrients between those um, zones uh, is, is a very important. It's important to food webs. It's been, you know, documented and studied uh, to great length. Um, and, uh, and, and we are obviously very proud of that. There is an enormous tourism potential and value in that. It's a, it's a growing development and, and we, as much as we possibly can, we, we want to try and protect that and, and even promote um, you know, the animals utilizing that coastal zone. So in time I do hope that uh, the authorities um, will, will make some clever decisions in that. Uh, we would certainly provide them with with all the, the necessary information, movement patterns of the lions and the potential of, of developing a tourism uh, um, activity there. And together with some of the big tour operators, uh, I think some clever decisions can be made and, uh, and that, would, that would certainly do a lot of good for both the Skeleton Coast Park, the lion population and Namibia uh, as a whole.